Hello everyone, and welcome back to part 45 of Build HMS Victory. Okay, so if you join me in part 44, I just finished off all the uh, the paint job for the hull for HMS Victory, and I've spent weeks on the hull now, so I thought a little bit obviously time to obviously start working on something else. I didn't want to get right to the end of the build and have uh, nothing left to do other than doing yarns and mast. So obviously I thought, and I think it's the best thing to do obviously when you're building something like this, but it's going to like obviously take years is obviously to just you know I mean, separate things up a little bit, do some mass, do some yards, go and work on the hull, work on some obviously the ornamental details and then just keep swapping and changing so obviously it keeps the interest up. Sometimes you can like you can look at the obviously the bigger picture and think, oh I can't face it. Yeah so if you just play it up into smaller sections it just seems to help you uh, progress a little bit more. So anyway as you can see I've got the lathe down, the mini lathe, obviously I've not used it for weeks. Well, months actually so obviously it'd be nice to obviously start turning some uh, some different things this time so yeah from this video I'm gonna work on the yard. Okay so one of the first things I need to do is obviously I'm just taking a five mil dowel that was supplied with the kit. And so I've laid me my, uh, my four mass plans on my desk obviously what I'm gonna do now is obviously I'm just gonna uh, kind of offer it up to the side of the, the four yard plan. I'm not gonna build it the same way as obviously as people know before watching previous videos. But obviously, I just still need obviously some uh, kind of indication mark for the scale. So I'm just going to draw a little mark where obviously where I need to start and end the taper. And then just pretty much where I'm going to cut it in half. Okay, so I've sanded the mast into me uh, into my lathe. Obviously, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna highlight the pencil marks a little bit more. So I pretty much know obviously that's the distance between the mast that I need to taper. And it's pretty much it stays at five mil at this side. And it's just tapered down to three mil. And because it's such a small scale. The, one of the easiest ways to do it is just obviously getting your sandpaper is that the the, uh, the mass is rotating and just taper it down. Like I say, it's uh, it's too thin really to obviously have to use any kind of chisels on it or anything like that. So just after about 30 seconds, I've already reduced the width over a mil. Okay, so after about five minutes of just tapering the yard, we should also get the required taper that we want. So I'm just gonna so just check the measurements. So we should obviously we should be starting with your five mil. And obviously you should be tapering down. 4.3, 3.9. We should be tapering at steps all the way down for 3.6, 3.1, yeah, all the way to three mil. So we're getting the required taper from five mil down to three mil. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring the yard back onto the plans. Let's obviously just check the final measurements. And that's okay, so obviously that can be just obviously just cut to length on the edge as an eclipse issue. And I've also just slightly tapered the end of the yard down, so obviously I'm gonna bring the bodies together. I'll just use that as a dowel. Okay, so these can be cut to size. Okay, so 
Okay, so it's time to start working on the batten for the yard. I've just cut, it, cut a piece of four before. This is actually uh, oak. Just got some laying around, so I thought I'd just use this for this build. So the first thing we need to do is obviously just obviously we just need to uh, taper off these corners to make it an octagonal section. So there's obviously it's only a four before, so the easiest thing to do is obviously you can just use your obviously you just use a, a sanding block. So you can just have it onto the corner and just tape it more out. Or you can just put it on the bench and just punch your knife down on the corner. And that's probably one of the easiest ways to do it. I tend to use one of these utility knives obviously for this kind of this kind of work. So obviously you can just obviously once it gets blown, you can just snap off a piece and then you've got another really razor sharp edge. Okay, so the next stage of building the batten we need to take uh, some 3 by 2 obviously and cut them to the same length for the batten. And we just need to glue one on every face. Once you have with the final position, you can just take some clamps. Okay, so while the glue is drying on the batten, we need to make some filling pieces. It's going to fit in between these uh, these bands. And all we need to do is obviously just take this square and just need to like chamfer it on each side, just to make it more of a like a triangle shape. So all I'm doing, like I say, that I'm just taking my craft knife, and I'm just running it down each edge. That's what I said. I don't want to. I don't want to narrow the face at all, but I just want to. Taper this angle down to a triangle. Okay, so I've just brought the yard pattern over and I'm now going to just mark the position of where the cleats are going to be. I'm also going to just mark the position where these filler pieces end. Okay, so I'm marked where the position the cleats are going to be. So now I can start filling in these sections of batten. Okay, now so it's a little bit wood glue. I'm going to start in these.
just one more this time. Okay, all we do now is obviously just glue four more on the way around. Okay, so now all the glue's dry, and obviously I've sanded all the batting, it can be brought back to the plans. Line up, obviously what the positions are cleaved, and they can be marked to be cut to the correct length. So in between these two pencil marks, we should have 64 millimeters, and we do. So that can be cut to length. <laughs> so all the bands have been cut to length and sanded down. And I'm just tape at this end. So obviously just doing the same on this end. All you gotta do is pretty much like that, obviously, then angle your scalpel, just angle it 45 degrees down, just keep rotating it. Then that's going to give you a nice little taper that you need. Okay, so it's a case of obviously bringing these two parts together now. So obviously, I just need to start drilling a, a 3 mil dowel in the end of the, the batten. So I'm just going to start off, I'll just already mark the centre, so I'm going to start off with a 2 mil, 2 mil drill, and then just keep working my way up to 3 mil. And then just finish off drilling my larger drill, a 3 mil drill. So now I'm saying you can bring the two parts together. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of epoxy resin. I just recently bought some uh, different ones. These are like actually, well, they're just cheap. But I thought they might be a lot easier because you can control the, obviously, how much you put out a lot easier than trying to squeeze that tube. So, so I'll just mix a little bit together. I'm just gonna add a little bit to the yard arm. So I've already glued this one in place. So I'm just going to push it in. I'm just going to use it because it's tapered from five down to three. So I'm just going to use a little scrap of wood just to kind of rest, push the yard arm down. Okay, so when the, uh, the top yard was made, also, when obviously these buttons were bind together, then it was obviously all bound by these iron hoops. And obviously, it's quite hard to reproduce. You know, obviously, the iron hoops on obviously on, on these smaller scale models. So one of the best things to do, as you can see, that just take some obviously just two mil masking tape, and it makes a really good job. I'm obviously just reproducing. Or replicating the iron hoops. Yes, yeah, so obviously, that's one of the easiest ways of obviously reproducing that. Now, obviously, once you've done that, just obviously get to wash over with some diluted PVA, then obviously they, they won't come loose then. Okay, so we've taken the top four yard back onto the drawing and now we're just going to mark the positions for the quarter boom
Okay, so I've just added the boom irons, and obviously I've just added the the booms as well. But obviously they're not stuck in. They're not obviously the final position or been cut to length yet, or tape slightly tapered. They're just obviously just there, so obviously so they can hold all these these irons in the correct position while the glue dries. Okay, so that pretty much wraps this up for this video. Just a quick one. Obviously, I'd like to do all the uh, all the main working features first. So if you join me next week, obviously you'll see me just obviously I'll just finish off the yard. I'll be adding obviously the rest of the booms. I'll be adding the stirrups and obviously painting it and adding the block and tackles. So anyway, hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you all next time.